Hi, how are you doing today? I'm glad to be with you. This is our 30th um, communion that we're having. And we started um, inside of the quarantine. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to be with you today. Hi, Tracy. It's just been a, a, an interesting day of not being able to finish all the things that I had wanted to. Um, I did want to talk to you about the things we were taking for health. But then um, I wanted to give you a printout on that. And um, I worked on it up to the last minute. And even I'm a couple minutes late because I was trying to fix that. But I'll have to, I can give you the link, but I'll have to uh, finish it later on today. Good morning, Leonard. So glad to see you. L.A., praise God. Deborah, Boonhop, Rodell, hi. Colleen, you're, you're watching and I'm waving. Hi, Paula. Good morning. <laughs> Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. I'm I'm blessed to be here. I <laughs> I have a, a link for you, but it's not working, but it will be working. Um I'll pro I'll, I think I'll just wait and give it to you on Monday. I'm sorry that I couldn't get it ready. It's almost ready. There's <laughs> Just one little hidden thing that wasn't done. So um, I have the uh, list all printed out, but to make it so it'll send to you, there's some, one more thing I need to do. Good morning, Kans Candace. Almost said Kansas. Good morning, Candace. Good morning, Debbie. I'm so grateful for you. Paul, praise God. How are you doing today? I have a new uh, ebook update that I want to send to you. So today is May 8th. And May 8th is, for, is when most people celebrate first fruits. The kingdom is given to people who bear fruit. And so first fruits is a time of giving. Good morning, Apostle Bernard. Bless you. Bless you. I'm so grateful for all of you. Donna, hello. How are you? So we're celebrating uh, First Fruit today. I'm not going to talk a lot about it except as we begin here. Because First Fruits requires that, that we be good ground and that we give. And as we give, we bear fruit. Is that right? It, the first fruits was the celebration that they gave of what they had, believing that God would give back. First fruits is a harvest. And we talked about how that was a harvest of the garden in our heart. And that the Lord is waiting to harvest the precious fruit of our lives. He's not waiting for our gifts. He's wait, uh, waiting for the fruit of our lives. And it's and part of that is giving. And it's hard to give in times of crisis like this, but we need to be uh, givers. It comes as part of our growth process. We can't grow this way unless we get rid of some of the past. We have to make room for the growth. Is that right? So, I'm, I'm just looking here at some of the things that we talked about here. Um, that we can't judge each other on whether or not we, uh, we use this, um, we practice celebrating these feasts because they uh, are not necessary for us to practice anymore. Linda, hello. Uh, Leonard, amen. <laughs> They're not necessary for us because Jesus didn't come to abolish them, right? But he came to what? Fulfill them. Jesus is the fulfillment of the feasts. So we're looking at the feasts from a New Testament lens and we're discovering that 
they, they were shadows of what was to come, and they show us an even greater truth in the New Testament than they had in the Old, because when Jesus fulfilled them, they became the expression of who he is. Hi, Jenna. So there's so much more that we have to learn about first fruits. <clears throat> but it says here, when you come to the land and you reap its harvest, you shall bring a sheaf of first fruits. A piece of your pr production of your life. And let me just read this to you from the Message Bible. It's just something I was reading this morning that I marked. Romans 12 and 1, which we know so well. But this is from the Mirror. Bible. Be consistent with who you really are, inspired by the loving kindness of God. My brethren, the most practical expression of worship is to make your bodies available to him as a living sacrifice. This pleases him more than any religious routine. He desires to find visible individual expression in your person. So what we see with all of this is that the New Testament sacrificial system no longer involves dead animals and wheat grain, right? But it involves living people. It, it involves the sacrifice of your heart. This is day... Um, 59 of my quarantine. It's getting better all the time. <laughs> Please put the names of your friends in, in, in the text here. Put their Facebook names so we can give them an opportunity to join us. Hi, Shante. Gabrielle, good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you. So we, we want to make sure then that this week has been consecutive so I hope that you've been able to catch up with everything in this week. It's 11-11. It's time for us to begin. And hi, I'm Dr. Kwani. It's, it's important that we keep things in context here. And we understand that today the world, uh, the Jewish world, is, is um, celebrating the, har the harvest of first fruits. And so we, we've been talking about what that fulfillment is in the New Testament. Hi, Cindy. Good to see you. Good morning. Terry, I'm so glad you're here today. What, a, what an incredibly great honor it is for me to be able to share with all of you here today. Today... I'm not really going to talk about something great and revelatory, but just something that I believe encourage, will encourage us and cause us to just hold on to the day. Communion was a, a, a be, beginning with Melchizedek when he gave Abraham communion as a blessing and as a result of the blessing Abraham gave. Is that right? Abraham tithed out of blessing, not out of obligation, not out of guilt. Good morning, Sean. But he tithed out of victory. Apostle Steve, my goodness, how wonderful to have you with us today. Congratulations. Congratulations. So we know then that communion is the word koinonia. And koinonia is the word that was birthed in my heart from the very first thing. I promise you the very first thing that the Lord ever expressed to me that I remember is the word koinonia. And I didn't know what it meant for 
a long time. I didn't know that it had a meaning. I just knew the word. But here's koinonia, and it means communion. And so here I am at the end, beginning to speak what the Lord said in the beginning. Isn't that amazing? That everything turned around to come back to koinonia. Now, here we have Pentecost, and Pentecost is the beginning of the church. It is Pentecost. Now, the church came out from the side of Jesus when he was crucified, but the church became ignited right at Pentecost. The flames on their head, they were filled with power. They were endued from on high so that they could go out and turn the world upside down. So today, we ha are celebrating first fruits, which we talked about earlier today. And, and in first fruits, the priest always waved the loaves of bread as a, as a sacrifice, right? And, and the word for first fruits means of the promise to come. Gosh, it was a foreshadowing of what was to come. And the word first fruits literally means a piece of the loaf, a part of the whole. Amen, Apostle Teresa. Thank you for joining us. Selena, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so we have this combination of koinonia. Koinonia is communion. Koinonia is first fruits that we're celebrating today. Part of the loaf, a piece. Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave a piece to each person. That's what he did at Pentecost. Now we see first fruits. It, I'm sorry. That's what Jesus did at Passover. Now we see that first fruits is also a part of the whole that we are a piece of the whole. When Jesus took the bread loaf, he broke it into pieces, and then he said, remember me. So when we take the bread individually, and we are together in doing that, we remember or join it back together the, the whole loaf. First fruits is that we give of what we have, trusting the Lord for increase. So we know that the first bread at Passover was unleavened. But I'm pretty convinced that the Pentecost bread should be leavened. Because the kingdom of God is like Leaven. So if we're entering into the kingdom of God that is growing and growing and growing and growing, and I'll probably talk to you a little bit more about that in a little bit, but it's, it's the growth of the kingdom in us. When we, eat of, when we eat of Pentecost bread, that piece of the whole loaf, it's growing in us. <laughs> Thank you. Apostle Teresa, I'm, I'm glad. I'm not sure I'm communicating. <laughs> so Jesus told Nicodemus, the wind blows wherever it pleases, and you hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So is everyone who's born of the Spirit. Now, I have thought about that scripture so much this year because, <laughs> yes, thank you, Gabrielle, yes. Nathan, praise God, thank you for joining us. The wind, that word is pneuma. It's the same word as spirit. It's the same word as breath. The wind, the breath of God. Are you following me? The Spirit, same, same thing, blows wherever it wants. You hear the sound, but you can't tell where it's from or where it's going. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. Isn't that what happened when, when 
when uh, Pentecost came, which is May 31st, we're celebrating it. When the, for, what did they hear? They heard this great, big, huge wind. And, and so James, Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus, that wind is going to go wherever it wants. <sighs> the breath of God. We, we, we must understand that that's the same word. The breath, God is a spirit. <sighs> same word. Numa. God is a wind. God is a breath. In Genesis 1, the creation of the earth, it says the spirit of God hovered, brooded over the water. The spirit, the breath of God, <laughs> it blew over the troubled waters. It, it hatched life out of chaos. It was creative power. The spirit of God hovered, birthed, hatched, blew over the earth. So we have the spirit of God being breath. Are you with me? The breath of God. Wasn't it the breath of God that blew life into creating humankind? And God blew. His breath, his spirit came into us. And we replicate his breath. His DNA was in his breath. And we are the breath of God is what moves us. The wind, the breath of God is what causes the church to move forward. Even on the lost, the Holy Spirit is blowing. It's blowing. That wind is continuously blowing. We've talked about that for several weeks now. The wind keeps blowing. The wind is blowing. It's blowing on us all. It's blowing on the lost. I have a preacher friend who has fallen so badly. And I just... I just weep over him. He's one of the most gifted people I've ever met. But he's fallen so badly. And he said to me, no matter what terrible place I'm in, I find myself preaching inside of my head. I can't get rid of it. I can't get away from it. Because the wind of God is blowing. Is that right? Praise God. So in Ezekiel then, um, we see that the Spirit of God is like the uh, a blowing on, on the dead bones. And the Lord said, prophesy what? To the wind. Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the wind. It blows into our lungs. The breath of God blows into the very part of us that this pandemic is trying to hurt. So King James tells us that we make music. He says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit and speak to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart. The wind makes music. The wind blows and we can hear it, but we don't understand. Now I come, uh, I, I spent uh, almost 15 years in Guam and I know a whole lot of you people that are on this today were with me in Guam and I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. But when we're there, you know, typhoons are a regular they're just a regular event. And, and, and when the warnings come, you get out and you put plywood on your windows. And it, <laughs> we always wonder how bad it's going to be because we can't see it coming, right? We Somebody on the news tells us that it's coming, but we can't see it. You can't see the wind by itself unless it hits something and makes a sound. But... Oh my gosh, we would hear the warning sirens and we knew there were things that we had to do. 
We had to get water. We had to get supplies. We had to put gas in the car. We had to put a blanket on the freezer so when the power goes out, we won't lose all our food right away. And, and my family loved to watch the storms. They were dark and mesmerizing and and a lot of a couple of my kids loved to go outside and, and we would all go outside in the middle of the worst typhoons and play in the middle because when the when there's this place in the storm where there's calm and we would go out and play and we'd have uh blankets and sheets and we'd let it pull and we'd lay back and and the wind would hold us up and a lot of times the roads were impassable and the telephone poles would be down across the the roads and there were several times that were so serious in our lives and we couldn't go and rescue people there was one storm that was so bad that my husband went out to uh, adjust the um, planks on the on the windows, and it uh, the storm blew his glasses off his face. <laughs> we had another hole in one of those, and we had to take a cupboard door off the kitchen and go and put it in the hole so that it would keep the wind out of our house. And it, this was a super typhoon. We had several super typhoons, but this we're talking about storms. We're talking about the force of wind. We're talking about the what the wind can do. And and this storm blew the airport amnemometer away and turned tanker trucks upside down. It was it was just unbelievable. <clears throat> the rain was coming against our concrete house so hard that it blew water up through our concrete floor. Just, you know, about that far, but we'd have water blowing up through the floor. And then afterward, we wouldn't have water for a, a long time, and we'd have to hike up the hill where the military had brought in tankers for water. <clears throat> and we had alternating power for oh, about seven months. <clears throat> It's really hard to have a church in the in the tropics with no power. And my daughter, um, she was in a second story apartment, and the wind blew her uh, windows out, the double doors. They blew out of her place. She hid behind her kitchen counter with her little kids, and the the wind was so it was. Uh, she had her Christmas tree up because it blew the the all the ornaments and 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 the the ornaments and the Christmas paper was all stuck to the walls because the wind and the water had just ripped her her Christmas packages all up. We're just talking about wind. We're talking about the force of wind and how. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom. And, oh, you guys know I've written books about that. You can't see the kingdom. We can't see it unless we're born again. Nicodemus didn't understand that. And Jesus went on to explain the wind, Numa, blows hard wherever it wants. You can hear the sound, but you can't tell where it's going, so is everyone who's born of the Spirit. One, one, uh, one translation says, the Spirit breathes hard, and you hear the language of it. You recognize the manifestation by its voice. See, we can't, we can't hear the wind until it hits something. But the wind, the Spirit of God, is what came at Pentecost, and it's what came to fill us. In the Old Testament, it's called Ruach. 
In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came and went. It would set upon a people for a, a moment, and then it would lift. In the New Testament, it comes what? Inside of us. Comes within us. It, the Spirit of God is what leads us to our destiny. Though, now, this is difficult. God is a spirit. Jesus was filled. Jesus was filled totally with the Spirit of God. Jesus said, I have to leave so that the Comforter might come. And then 10 days later at Pentecost, it says, the Spirit came. And when you hear the wind, it was the wind of the Spirit coming into the people, coming into the house and coming into the people. It was a wind from heaven. It was a, a fresh wind that nobody had, had experienced like that before. It came into them to, to abide. It could not do that. Until Jesus now, who was filled, he was, I hope you're hearing me because I've heard this a hundred times and never gotten it. I've heard it a thousand times and never gotten it. God is a spirit. Jesus was filled totally with the spirit of God. He had to leave so that the spirit of God could enter the people. Oh my gosh. We change when that happens, don't we? The word kingdom is malu, uh, malkuta. And actually it's a feminine noun. Don't shout me down now. <laughs> the kingdom is, is about the inner realm. Don't you know that the kingdom of God is within and what that word means is constantly growing it's constantly expanding a fully formed extension of God's power uh, that dwells inside of you the extension the building up of who God is 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 extending in you the kingdom cannot be observed Gosh, it's like the wind, isn't it? We can't see it, but it blows into our life and it blows into me and it blows into our miracles. <coughs> I remember there was a, a guy in our church named Victor. Actually, he wasn't in our church at the time, but his wife was, and Victor was in intensive care and Victor was in intensive care and he he, he needed <coughs> major heart surgery. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, which is not a good thing when you're in Guam because they didn't have a traditional hospital. And uh, his wife asked us to come in and he was very angry because he didn't want to even talk to us. But he, here he was in intensive care, heart, couldn't move needed immediate surgery and we went in and prayed for him I, I prayed for him and you know what happened he he got up and and walked out of that hospital never to have another heart problem because miracles come in this blowing miracles come through the wind of god that is in us to to pray for people, to activate people, to to move into the places where we don't even understand where the wind is going. We, I'm reading your comments here. <laughs> Maggie had um, a really bad toothache. Maybe I told you about that, and she came to church and. And funny, I had a really bad toothache that day. I, I was just in agony and I couldn't find anyone to go to. Well, Maggie came up. Um, Maggie came up for prayer and I, my son and I prayed for Maggie. And 
we, we watched the gold come into her teeth and circle around and circle around. And everybody in the church who was there that day got to see that gold moving around in her mouth. I, on the other hand, still had a toothache when I went home. And I had to go to the dentist. I'm going, uh, you know, I don't understand how God works. But he, he loves to move by his spirit, by his wind. We don't understand. I'm trying to say, we can't predict where the wind is going to go. We don't know what's happening. And it's not us that take the credit. Because it's the wind of God, right? It's the wind. I know one day Maggie was walking across the street to be with me, and she came to me, and as she was walking, she had to grab her clothes. Turns out that she instantly lost 40 pounds. Now, I would like that miracle. I would love to have that miracle. But the wind blows wherever it wants to. By the Spirit of God, it moves where it, you can't predict it. That's what I'm trying to say. We don't know what's going to happen. God told Timothy, fan, fan into flame the gift of God. Blow wind on it. <laughs> Did you not experience the power of the Holy Spirit? When is the last time that you felt the wind? I guess is what I'm trying to end our day of first fruits with. When, when did you last sense walking in the power of the Spirit? Maybe you need to fan your flame today. <laughs> Maybe we need to fan the flame of God that's on our life. So let's take our communion today. I have so much more I want to say about this. I'm so grateful that you're all here today. And we're learning about you, Lord. We're learning about how Jesus had to leave in order for him to return at Pentecost in the Holy Spirit. We are your church. Lord, we are filled with your wind. Lord, blow upon us again. I know you're constantly blowing, but Lord, we just open our sails to receive the breath. Fan the, fan the flame that is upon you today. My friend, fan it. Remember, Did you experience the power of the Holy Spirit in the past? Are you walking in the power and the wind of the Holy Spirit today? Let's just fan that flame. Let's just fan the flame of the wind of God today in your life and in mine. And Father, we thank you that we can be part of this body. Lord, that we can be part of the loaf In first fruits, we see that it's the first part of the loaf. Lord, that we can be part of the loaf. We can be the first part of the loaf, God, that you have created your body to be. And Lord, we are so excited to be part of your body today. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for life. God, we thank you for our healing. Lord, that you're keeping each and every one safe. Lord, we pray for all the sick people in the world. God, that we just release your wind upon the sick. Lord, we thank you for miracles. God, we thank you for outstanding reports. Lord, people that know you and people that don't. God, because you blow upon the world. And Father, I thank you that you are sparing lives. You are creating healing inside the hearts of people as well as in their bodies. Thank you, Father, 
God, I thank you to be a part of this body in Jesus' name. You know that um, the wind can create patterns of beauty. It can create cloud formations, beautiful waves on the beach. And the psalm says, uh, let the beauty of the Lord be upon us and establish the work of his hands. Yes, establish the work of his hands. And I pray that for you today. I pray that for each and every one of you. That you find beauty in your life. That you find purpose for today and tomorrow and for your future. And so we take the drink, Lord, and we thank you that you establish us in your new covenant. Father, thank you that your wind blows upon us. God, we thank you for fresh wind. God, we thank you that we can make music in our hearts. That we can sing songs by your spirit, Lord, that we can sing songs. By your wind, Lord, you carry us forth with good news to other people. <laughs> God, we make ourselves available to your wind. And we thank you, God, for the blood of sacrifice that has saved us and forgiven us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. What an incredible week. I've been so blessed talking about first fruits and talking about giving of yourself. It's, it's the time the wind blows on us to show us what to give. We've been growing in the garden of our heart, the fruits of the Spirit that we can impart in ministry, the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of God's breath. The fruits of Numa, P N E U M A, the fruit, the fruit of your lives, the fruit of your lips giving thanks, the fruit of your lives being blown out, blown out to others. I pray that you will write to people, that you will share with people, that you will move forward with all you have to give to others this weekend and I can't wait to see you on Monday at 11 11.